Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. I'm your host and millennial investor and in this video what we're going to go over is we're going to go over my investing goals for 2021. I'm going to go over all these, why I chose these numbers and why I'm picking these and why they are so important to me. I narrowed it down to the top five. I'm going to leave these available all through the year of 2021 and I, we're going to beat these investing goals as we go along hopefully. And then after that said and done I want to give an update on a company that I haven't talked about in months. This is my second largest company in terms of value, in terms of dollars invested into this company. And it's also my number one company in terms of shares. I have 11.3 shares of realty income. I am a big believer in this company. I love real estate in general. And if you see my portfolio, like I said, it's my second largest investment. And I have it at a target weighting of 8% my entire net worth. And especially since I have a bunch of big deposits coming up, this portfolio should be around... 12 13 000 by the time we get to the end of january so it's going to be a lot of fun guys giving you all these updates and since i haven't talked about realty income in months i wanted to give you some quick bullet points some new news that i need to go over giving an update on rents talking about them raising their dividend yet again here in 2020 before we finish out the year talking about them refinancing their debt redeeming some of their old debt and then issuing some new debt as well and giving you some of the just basic bullet points about how these real estate companies make money and why i think they're such an incredible profitable business model that I think you as a shareholder, you as an investor, should be dividend investing into these companies. But it's going to be a fun one, guys. If you want to see me update these charts every single month, follow along and track with me these 2021 goals that hopefully I'll be able to beat. If you want to get signed up with M1 Finance, this is the brokerage that I'm using here in this video. It is absolutely free to use with some incredible features and an amazing user interface. We have 62 people signed up, which by the way, that's part of my 2021 investing goals, but 62 people have signed up. And if you download M1 Finance so you can get started with your dividend portfolio, you can use this link down below in the description. And if you use the link and you deposit $100 to the platform, you'll get a free 10 bucks. So an easy $10 there that you don't have to work for. And if you want to invest in my pie yourself into the 24 companies that I own, this pie is shared down below. And if you want to keep updated with all my investments, all my reasons that I make these changes, follow along with me in the channel and invest alongside me. And there's lots of other things down below as well as well as mentoring calls, Yada savings accounts, credit card referrals, and lots of other things as well. But let's go ahead and get into my 2021 investing goals. My annual dividend income as of last month, so I haven't updated it yet at the end of 2020. I still have a couple more days, a couple more deposits to go through, then I'll update it. But as of the end of November, at the end of November, I'm at $269 of annual dividend income. This means if I held my investments, I didn't sell anything, I didn't buy anything, and no companies raised or cut their dividend, I would make $269.04. Now, I think that right now, after this month of deposits, it should be somewhere around $280, $285, something like that. Now, after I have some big deposits, as well as a year worth of weekly deposits, like I make every Monday when I make these weekly $100 deposits that you'll see right here, make these every week. Now, after that's said and done, my goal is to get this annual dividend income, this column right here, up to $600. And at that rate, if you factor that into a monthly basis, that annual dividend income of $600 is 50 bucks a month. That's $50 a month on average of deposits that I don't need to make. That's if I fell asleep and I never touch this portfolio again. $50 would be getting reinvested into my dividend portfolio every single month. That's incredible. Next up, my portfolio value last updated at the end of November right here is $8,119. And as you can see right here, I still have another deposit to go. We are almost to the end of December and I still have another deposit to make today on Monday. And I do have a couple more days of the market so the price may fluctuate. But I think my portfolio should end up somewhere around $8,700. Now the cool part is, is that I'm cashing out my temporary 401k that I have at Simmons Bank. I'm going to work at Tinker Federal Credit Union. New job by the way, forgot to mention that. But my new job, I will be cashing out my 401k. It is a Roth, so there's like hardly any taxes or anything coming out. And that should be about $1,500. And I will be putting this into the portfolio as well, as well as a $2,000 refund check that I should be getting at the beginning of the year. So back-to-back -back huge deposits, as well as my weekly $100 deposits as well. And then when you just factor that in over the course of the year, as well as my dividend income, as well as the portfolio, hopefully going up in value. With that said, the portfolio should be around 20 k I, that is my goal at least, right? I want to try to at least get to 20K. Or at least that is my goal. I want to try to get to $20,000 by the end of 2021. Some ambitious goals. I think it'd be pretty awesome. Let's see if we can get that done. Number three, YouTube income. Oh, by the way, this is for the year, obviously, not for a monthly basis. I want it to finish around 3,000. 
And for all these, I'll be giving my annual updates. And when the same thing with December, when December is finally over, we will add up all of what I made. Now, this is everything. This is not just YouTube ads, okay? This is referrals down below. Like I said, this is mentoring calls that are down there below in the description. This is signing up for M1 Finance. This is the ads that you see in the middle of the video. This is everything under the sun. And I'm sure you just saw that ad just then. So thank you for watching it. That's help funding this portfolio and helping me grow my annual income. But over the year of 2021, I want to make $3,000. Basically, the way I look at it, $3,000, that's $250 a month average. I want to average $250 a month from this YouTube side income. I think that would be a steady little passive income stream. Next up, we have 100 referrals to M1 Finance. Like I said, if you want to get signed up, it's in the description. We have 62 people signed up. So basically, over the course of the next year, I want to try to get at least another 38 people signed up. Get it to a nice, easy round number of 100. That is really motivating to me to not only see that I'm getting referral money to get people started, but it's so exciting to know that new investors out there are getting started investing, and they probably never have invested before. And another good thing about this is, even if they already have invested and they're getting started with M1 Finance, then dividend investing with M1 Finance gives people an opportunity to make M1 Finance some revenue and to make this platform better. So I fully support M1 Finance. That's why I put money inside of them. That's why I love their features. And they're coming out with new features every single day through these announcements. So just like the new perks that they have with their new shopping cards, I think that they're going to continue to innovate, continue to strive. And like I said, I did go over their CEO, Brian Barnes, some words that he had to say about their features. So go check that out and learn my previous videos. And then last but not least, I own 24 companies. Now the cool part is, now that I've got this narrowed down i started with i believe 32 back in april when i started this portfolio and now we have it at 24 now i've weeded down some of the companies because i'm going to be honest i did get a little bit trigger happy when i started this it was literally like 10 days after the stock market was at its rock bottom and companies were trading at ridiculous prices now in the process we've narrowed it down from 32 down to 24 this is how i usually like it around the 20s where i have my forever stocks and then a couple on the side but that said i expect to keep most of these companies into 2021 we may have some small changes and like i said usually when i make my changes we're usually talking about a one two three percent change most of the portfolio will stay the same through 2021 but maybe 5-10% of it may vary over the course of the next 12 months or so. But that said, we will check at the end of 2021. I will keep this up, like I said, for the rest of the year. The 20 companies that are on this list right now, the 24, or excuse me, the 24 companies that are on this list, out of the 24, I want 20 of them to raise their dividend at least once in 2021. If I had to guess, to be honest, out of these companies on the list, out of the 24, I think, honestly probably all 24 will raise them and if not at least 22 23 but my goal is to have at least 20 of my 24 companies raise their dividend in 2021 so i'm going to be tracking all of these goals over the course of the year like i said i'll give them updates every single month so let's hope that i'm able to beat all five of these goals i think there's some very ambitious goals but also very realistic so we'll see if we're able to get it done and you can guys can track along this with me over the course of the next year but now that that's said and done, let's go ahead and get into my second largest investment, like I said right here. Let's go ahead and look at Realty Income. Let's look at the performance of the price so far, and then we'll talk about how this company can relate going forward. Now, if we look at the price of Realty Income, it's traded in the 60s and the 70s. And even before the big recession, this company was in the $80 a share range, okay? And I think at even $80 a share, this is an excellent company to purchase. And when you're looking at this company at $60 a share, you're talking about an absolute steal. Now, the way that this company works is that Realty Income makes its money through really four main steps. They buy property. Okay, pretty simple enough. They buy real estate. They lease it out to a financially reliable tenant, which we'll go over that in just a second. But they only pick the highest quality grade tenants. These aren't any small name companies. These are some of the largest corporations in the world, including Walgreens, Home Depot, 7-Eleven, major names like that that you know and see every single day. And the leases, this is key here, number three, this is one of the reasons why I love Realty Income, is that the leases are triple net lease. This leads to less maintenance, less liability, and go ahead and look it up, but basically that means that a lot of the maintenance and fees that come along with owning real estate, Realty Income passes that on along to the tenants. So that means they have less operating costs, they don't have to deal with the properties and all the issues it comes along with. They do lower the rents because of it, but that means that they have a lot less liability on their hands. And number four, the rents usually CPI based. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. They increase year over year. 
So basically what they'll do, a lot of times they'll sign contracts, it's either a steady percentage or it's usually based off the CPI, Consumer Price Index. And basically what that means, let's say hypothetically, Consumer Price Index went up 2% every single year, like clockwork, no variance whatsoever, just went up 2% every year. That means that the rents for a lot of these contracts signed on these properties would also go up 2% every year. So they steadily raise rents time after time, year over year, and that leads to the next step that I want to talk about, the profit sources for realty income. The step one is that the properties that they originally bought, that they're renting out to people, go up in value. In the long run, no matter where the properties are, it's like the stock market. It's like investing, right? Eventually, it's going to go up. Whether the real estate prices in that area go up over the next year or two, I don't know. No matter what happens with real estates, if they go up, they go down. But generally speaking, in the long run, on a 5, 10, 15, 20-year basis, generally speaking, property values increase over time. So those properties that they're buying at the beginning stage on step one, they will steadily increase in value and be worth a lot more money. And then step two, like we said, going back to step number four from how they make money, the rents genuinely go up, right? So as these companies become more profitable, as they sell more products, as they sell more services, realty income just raises the rent on them. So that just means more profit for the bottom line for realty income. And then third and last but not least, they take those profits and they just buy more properties. And this cycle goes back over and over and over again. Properties go up, rents get raised. They buy more properties, properties go up rents get raised. It's a beautiful cycle. It's a wonderful business model. And this company, Realty Income, is one of the best in the world, probably the best in the world at doing this. So before we go over just some of the portfolio highlights and some of the basic pieces of information about Realty Income, so I want to give an update real quick on some of the pieces of news that they came out with. And this goes over their rents collected, okay? So basically this means how many people in their portfolio of their rent that they're owed, how much are they actually being paid back? Now this number used to be a lot higher, just keep that in mind. But now we have the pandemic and a lot of companies are struggling and they haven't been able to afford rent, but these numbers still look great. This top line right here that I'm highlighting, this is the one that you should really be focusing on because this is the total rent across their entire real, real estate portfolio, okay? So the first one is at the end of September, they collected 93.2%, okay? Not bad. On Halloween night at the end of October, they collected 93.3%, up 0.1% from the previous month. And now at the end of November, they collected from 93.3 up to 93.6, up 0.3% again. Now, what's so great about this number is that you see it is steadily going up. I know one of the main reasons for this is that they had a lot of movie theaters that they rented out to people. And a lot of these movie theaters defaulted on their payments at the beginning of the pandemic. But now they're starting to come back. They're starting to pay rents again. And as we get the numbers in December, this should be coming out in the next week, two weeks or so. When that comes out, I'm sure that this number will be better than 93.6. But if it's not, either way, I will give an update on this next month. But that is very good numbers for realty income. I'm happy with almost a 94% collected portfolio rate. I'm okay with those numbers considering we're in a once in 100 year event. Now let's go to the next. Let's go to their dividends. As a dividend investor, realty income, I believe, should be owned by pretty much every single person out there. I named the companies in my portfolio, the 24 that I have. And in my portfolio, I have my nine forever companies, right? These are the companies that I'm, I'm just never going to sell them. It doesn't matter how good they do, no matter how bad they do. For me to sell these companies, something so extreme would happen to happen that it would just have to be ridiculous. Like Kimberly Clark, McDonald's, Home Depot, Coca-Cola, and so on. And one of those included is Realty Income. And one of the reasons that that is, is that not only does this company pay dividends every 30 days, which is very unique for a very high quality company, but they also raise its dividend a minimum of every 90 days. So just like that, they raise their dividend every single quarter at least four dividend raises per year and nothing changes here at the end of 2020 they raise their dividend from 0.234 to 0.2345 it's very small it's very gradual it shouldn't be very high but like i said with steadily increasing property values and steadily increasing their rents they can steadily over time increase those dividend payments as well as paying them out every 30 days so that gives you a lot of power as a dividend investor and not to mention just a little side note right here this company raised its dividend, right? And you see the sentence I'm about to highlight. This is its 109th dividend increase. 109th. This company has not been raising its dividend once or twice or 10 times. They raised it 109 times in a row. Pretty incredible. So just want to keep that in mind as a dividend investor. Next, as we go further along, I wanted to go over the news that they released on December 9th and then follow that up with the news that they came out with on the same day. 
December 9th. They announced this one first, and then they announced this one second. So this one that they announced first is that they're redeeming all outstanding 3.25% notes due 2022. Now what's so important about this is that they redeemed $950 million and then issued $725 million on this next news, okay? So they redeemed $950, so they deleveraged their balance sheet. And one of the reasons that they did this is that they were able to pay off their 3.25% notes and then issue debt for so cheap, I'm just, I'm blown away, guys. Now, one of the best parts about this company is that they're so high grade, they're such high quality, they have some of the best credit ratings out there. And when you're able to do that, and interest rates are at stupidly low prices, right? You can issue debt at 0.75 and 1.8%, less than 1 and 2%. This is insane. This debt is so low that literally both of these will probably be outpaced by inflation over the coming years. So they just issued new debt that is significantly lower, which is even crazier to say, than 3.25%. So you know what that means, guys? If they have these debts that they're issuing to shareholders, so that way they can fund their operations, which, by the way, aren't due until 2026 and 2033, so a long time down the road. That's what I want as an investor, a long-term debt standing for something that is cheaply leveraged as this. They can now improve that bottom line because that's less interest that they're paying to these bondholders for the people that are buying these bonds. I think that this is an awesome move for realty income. The fact that they're able to get financing this low is just flat out incredible. But some quick bullet points to show you before I end this little rant about realty income, just give you some quick bullet points about why I love it, is that we went over this. They're raising their rents. They're increasing new properties. They're one of my favorite companies to own, and I never intend on selling them anytime soon. You look at some of their top tenants. Let's go ahead and look at the top 20. If you see, these are diversified between all different sectors, okay? So let me try to fit them all on the screen right here. Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, FedEx, Dollar Tree, LA Fitness, Regal Cinemas, AMC Theaters, Sainsbury's, Walmart, Lifetime Fitness, Circle K, BJ's Wholesale Clubs, Treasury Wine Estate, CVS Pharmacy, Super America, Kroger, Home Depot, GPM Investments, TBC Corp. All of these companies are diversified between all different sectors and different type of business models. It's not all grocery stores. It's not all movie theater chains. It's not all gym equipment. There's multiple revenue streams. There's multiple levels of diversification. And to even show you this, they're also diversified between all different areas of the country. As I hover over these, I'm just going to hover my mouse over. I'm not going to click any of them. You can see the state that you live in and see how many properties that they have and the percentage of rent that it makes up. It's not all in one state either. It's not all in Oklahoma, like the state that I live in, or not all in Michigan or all in Florida or just one half of the state, right? This company has properties all over the United States, as well as a few as well, I want to show you this, in the United Kingdom. So not only are they in the United States, they also have 31 properties, which 100% of them are leased, and that makes up 4.4% of their revenue. So not only are they diversified in the United States, they also have properties in the United Kingdom as well, and they're also diversified between different sectors. Now, they are very heavy in retail, I will give them that, but they do have some as well in industrial and in office, and in agriculture. So they are pretty risky towards retail. They are very heavily weighted there. That's one of the reasons why I have WP Carry, so they're not just retail. But that said, they have some of the best quality tenants out there. They have over 108 square feet worth of leasable property diversified between 6,000 588 different properties and I think that this company if you're owning it especially if you're a dividend investor if you're wanting to own stock in a company going into 2021 and you want a steady safe steadily growing dividend company I think realty income is the one to own because for a dividend investor I think that realty income is one of the best companies to own just in general because of its high quality nature incredible business model and excellent management team but thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, I will be tracking these goals every single year, every single month. And I do want to hopefully accomplish all five of these. But if you want to stay up to date with me, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And get signed up with all that stuff I mentioned down below at the beginning of the video. But thank you guys so much. And I'll catch you guys next time.